Good morning and a very warm welcome to St Mary's Church in Bransgore for this service for Burley, Bransgore, Thorny Hill and Henton Admiral. Wonderful to have you with us today. Today we're going to be beginning a new series looking at the epistle, the letter to the Hebrews from the New Testament. I think you're going to find it really encouraging. Something which it says uh, in the letter to the Hebrews uh, is this. The word of God is living and active sharper than a double-edged sword. This morning, as we gather together, we're going to be listening to God speak to us through his word, the Bible. And as we do so, God is going to be at work within us because his word is living and active. We'll start our service now by singing our first hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. It's just after eight o'clock in the morning on Wednesday morning uh, this week and I have just been uh, for a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, swim, swimming from uh, Bournemouth Pier to Boscombe Pier and uh, it's been very very nice. Now there is a trick to doing this. What you have to do is you find out which way the tide is going, if it's coming in or out. If the tide is coming in, which it's doing uh, today, then the water is gently drifting from uh, Bournemouth to Boscombe, from uh, west to east. So that if you get in the water and start to swim, that you, you, you will gradually drift in the right direction uh, as well. It gives you a bit of oomph and makes the swim much, much uh, easier. It's very easy to drift as Christians as well, particularly to, to drift away from Jesus. And I wonder if that's something which you feel you've done over the last uh, year. It's fair to say that many people in our church families will have drifted away over this last year, uh, not because of anything uh, dramatic. People already drift away or stop being Christians because they've read um, the God delusion or someone has proven the non-existence of God. Uh, no, people drift away gradually over a period uh, of time. They don't keep their eye on the ball and like the tide sweeping me along uh, this morning, before they know it, um, they've moved very far away from where they've started. Hebrews is a book in the Bible which encourages us not to drift away and to pay careful attention to what we've learned so that we don't drift away. We're going to be learning a little bit about that over the next uh, few weeks and we're going to dive into it uh, right now. Our reading today is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1 going to chapter 2 and verse 4. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. In these last days, he's spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word, after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven, 
So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. And in speaking of the angels, he says, He makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. But about the son, he says, your throne, O God, will last for ever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You've loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. He also says, In the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment they will be changed, but you remain the same, and your years will never end. To which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all God's angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, the big question today is what can you and I do to stop drifting away? What can we do to stop drifting away from Jesus as many, many people do? Uh, well, the secret to not drifting away, says Hebrews chapter 1 in the beginning of uh, chapter 2, is to understand who it is we're drifting away from when we drift away from following Jesus Christ. The key to not drifting away is to understand who Jesus Christ is. And that's how Hebrews begins his letter of encouragement, encouragement to stick at it in the Christian life with a reminder of just who Jesus is, just who it is we're following. And the message is that we can get nothing better than Jesus Christ. He is the final authority and he is the highest authority. Jesus Christ is the final authority. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers, Hebrews says, in many and various ways through the prophets, but now, in the last days, he's spoken to us by a son who he has appointed heir of all things. God has spoken continuously. He is a speaking God. He wants to be known. He's done that ever since the foundation of the world, says Hebrews. And he's spoken to us in lots of different ways through his servants, the prophets. But now he's sent us his final authority, his own son, Jesus Christ. I just imagine for a moment that a, a new neighbour moves in uh, next door. Uh, you don't see them move in, uh, but you know that somebody has, has moved in. And you get a note through the door. It's from your new neighbour who turns out is called Chris. Uh, and they would like to, to meet you um, at some point. And they're inviting you to a housewarming barbecue in a few weeks' time. Well, of course, speculation begins. Who is Chris? Everyone wonders. Well, uh, maybe the man of the house um, really hopes that Chris uh, is, a, is a nice chap he can play golf with. Someone who's really interesting. Lots of good conversation. Uh, maybe the lady of the house uh, is keen that... Chris isn't like the last person to live next door with their obsession uh, with drum and bass music shaking the house every night to its uh, very foundations. Uh, that's her hope. Speculation continues. And then a, a day later, a package arrives at the house. It's addressed to Chris, but obviously Chris isn't at home. Um, so uh, they wonder, what is in the package? And what does that reveal about the sort of person Chris is? Well, Dad uh, feels the package, it's, it's, it's heavy, and he thinks, well, maybe it is a collection of 
golf magazines. That's the hope that he's building on. Uh, maybe the mum uh, in the house is thinking, well, this is really heavy. Maybe their weights. Maybe uh, Chris is a hunky bodybuilder. Yes, maybe that's, maybe that's it. Well, the guessing is soon to stop. Knowing that the parcel is round uh, at their house, Chris pops round and knocks on the door. And Chris, it turns out, uh, is in fact a woman. And everyone's surprised. And it turns out, sadly, she's not uh, into golf. The guessing games uh, can stop at that moment. There have been messages, quite a few of them, but as, as soon as Chris turns up in person, there's no higher or better authority than Chris herself in person. There's no need to guess or speculate anymore because everyone has had a chance to meet Chris. Well, in the past, God spoke in lots of different ways and sent messages to his people through the prophets. The claim that Hebrews makes about Jesus is that Jesus is God's final and perfect representation of himself. Uh, who is the son? Well, he is the exact imprint of God's being, it says. You know, like uh, the, you get an image stamped on a coin. That's what the Greek words here, the exact image or the exact representation. When we, when we look at Jesus, we see the image of God himself in person. There's no better authority than that. He is the radiance of God's glory, like the rays of the sun shining forth uh, from the sun, so that the sun itself and the rays are indistinguishable. So the sun is indistinguishable from God the Father. When we look at Jesus, Hebrews tells us, we see God in all his splendor, all his glory. And so we don't need to say, having met Jesus, well, I wonder what God is like. Could he be like this or could he be like that? Because in Jesus Christ, we have the final authority, the last words on what God is really like. It's the final authority. There's, there's nowhere better we could turn then for truth. If, if we drift away from Jesus, we're never going to find anything that reveals the truth of reality better than the person of Jesus Christ. That's the claim that uh, Hebrews makes here. The guessing games about what God is like can stop because God has shown himself in person. God spoke in many and various ways in the past of the prophets, but now he sent a son who is the heir of all things and through whom he made everything. Jesus Christ is the final authority, but he's also the highest authority as well. There's nobody greater, says Hebrews, than Jesus. And because of this, it is a great mistake to walk away from him. Jesus Christ is the highest authority. All things were made by him, says Hebrews, through whom he made the universe. He perfectly reveals the Father. He's the exact imprint of God's very being. And Hebrews here is a very sophisticated writer, by the way. He uses excellent Greek and he uses philosophical words here, words that were used by the philosopher uh, Plato to describe what God is like. This is uh, fancy theology. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he's inherited is superior to theirs. Jesus Christ is the, the f ultimate authority. And um, what comes next might seem rather strange uh, to us, perhaps hearing this for the first time. But the author of Hebrews compares and contrasts Jesus to the, uh, to the angels. And we'll find out why that is in just, in just a moment. Uh, he says, well, to which of the angels did God ever say, you're my son, today I've begotten you? And Hebrews quotes lots of different passages from the Old Testament to draw a distinction between the authority of angels as splendid as they are. And let's remember that they really are splendid in the Bible. Every time someone meets an angel, they, uh, the angel's first words are, oh, do not be afraid, um, because angels are terrifying. They're splendid and magnificent. And when somebody meets an angel, their first response is to bow down and, and worship them because they think they've seen God. And so the angel corrects them. That's how splendid and magnificent angels are. And yet Hebrews says 
uh, that the sun is much greater. Because when did God ever say, uh, you are my son? Well, God says about the angels, let all God's angels worship his son. He says that the angels are the servants of the people of God. And yet about the son, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. And about the son, he says, in the beginning, you laid the foundations of the earth. He never says that about angels. When did God ever say to an angel, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Quoting again some words from the Old Testament. The Son, Jesus Christ, is vastly superior to the angels. Well, it might be the case that perhaps the people Hebrews is, is written to were a little bit obsessed with angels, you know how you have those sort of funny shops that sell all sorts of spiritual things, or maybe people thought angels were a bit exciting and they liked to uh, maybe pray to, pray to angels and like draw pictures of angels and, were, and thought that angels were just really great. And Hebrews wants to say, well, if you think angels are great, let's just remember how superior the Son of God, Jesus Christ, is to the angels. But the crux of the matter is here in chapter 2. We must pay the most careful attention therefore, to what we've heard, so that we don't drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? Now, I have a terrible secret, which only came to light this week, and after this it won't be a secret anymore. But for the first time in my life, I received a speeding ticket. Um, this week. Uh, I've got no excuse. I was breaking, breaking the speed limits by, you know, a reasonable, reasonable margin. I can't say everybody else was doing it, so it's not my fault or it's so unfair. And all those things people say, I was breaking the speed limit. I deserve to get the punishment. Now, of course, if I ignore um, the letter telling me about my, my speeding ticket, things are going to get worse and worse and worse uh, for me. At the moment, if I pay attention to it, it'll be fine. I'll do my driver's awareness course. Maybe I'll pay a small uh, a small fine. It's really easy because I'll do the driver's awareness course online at the moment and things will be, uh, will be fine. If I ignore it, I may have a fine and points on my license and all sorts of repercussions that could follow from that. It is a dangerous thing to ignore that message. Well, according to Jewish tradition, the law of God given to the people on, on Mount Sinai in a blaze of glory. The Ten Commandments, when they were given, they were given through angels. And those Ten Commandments were, were magnificent. They were the word of God. They showed God's perfect desire for justice. And because of that, every transgression of the law was met with an appropriate and just punishment. That's the glory of the law given through angels, well, if that law given by angels can't be ignored, how much more so, says Hebrews, can the message given by the Son of God, the exact representation of God's being the final authority, the highest authority, how much more should we not ignore the message of Jesus Christ? When we drift away, we're turning our backs on Jesus Christ who has spoken to us and those are words that shouldn't be ignored. Jesus is the final authority. We're never going to find anything better or newer or more perfect than what God has shown to us in Jesus Christ and Jesus is the highest authority, the one we really should pay very close attention to. Amen.
very much for joining with us today. Uh, if you uh, liked the service, please do give it a like on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet, and do share it on, on Facebook. Share some of the uh, encouragement so that we might not drift away as followers of Jesus Christ. There's quite a lot of things uh, going on um, at the moment. Uh, we're in the middle of a reorganisation in our parishes um, at, at the moment. Stick us in touch if you want to find out more about that. We've also got details on our, on our website. There's a dedicated group of uh, people from each of the parishes uh, looking at this, and they met with the bishop um, this week, and uh, you can find out more if you speak to one of your church wardens. Hopefully you know who, who they are. They can tell you uh, what stage we're at with the process of consultation. Uh, moving forwards. We've got APCMs uh, coming up. Look out for information on that on the church website where you can find out when um, AGM meetings for our parishes are, are taking place and we'd love you to participate in them. Uh, the Brands Court and Hinton ones are going to be on, on Zoom so look out for details on that as well and you can read the accounts on the website uh, brandsgoreandhinton.org. Uh, this Sunday, our services, as with other Sundays, are going to be 8 o'clock here in St Mary's Brand School and a later service at 4 o'clock also here. At 9 o'clock, we uh, uh, will have a service at um, St Michael's in Hinton and at 10.30, we've got a service at Burley Parish Church. And we haven't forgotten about All Saints Church in, in Thorny Hill. We'll be working out when, uh, when it's safe to reopen uh, that church and when the congregation would like to return uh, so we'll have news on that shortly, I hope. Let me pray for God's blessing now, as we finish. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.